my brothers and sisters today my preaching is about the second weapon which we can use against the devil forces powerfully the divine mercy chaplet my brothers and sisters this is for our century our time my brothers and sisters god has given through sister faustina so let's go into this let me tell you one beautiful testimony this happened in the life of brother stanley you know this brother was little active in the church in philippines one day he fell sick and he started vomiting blood the family members rushed him to the hospital but he went on bleeding whatever the medications this bleeding did not stop and finally he died the doctors gave the certificate as death and my brothers and sisters three days she was in the state of death and all the funeral arrangements were made and suddenly the brothers and they got up you know one lady who saw this was pregnant and suddenly delivered the baby when he was coming back and all the nurses in the hospital ran away seeing him getting up and walking across because he was pronounced dead and doctor said certified but god raised him up with a mission you know in this three days he had an encounter with jesus he was on the judgment seat of god but even though he was active in the church but what he was doing all wrong things his sin was shown and he would have been condemned to hell but jesus said i have a mission for you stanley you have to go back you know that's the divine mercy mission he did not even know what the divine mercy mission so jesus said i will tell you what has to be done this is my mission my brothers and sisters brother stanley got up after three days you see and from then onwards he started the mission more than 130 countries of the world he had traveled and spreading the divine mercy mission and one of his mission he had been to uk and here after he talked about divine mercy some youngsters came to him they told him brother stanley we are the children of some witches and warlocks and we have inherited the curses so please tell us what we have to do to be set free from this ancestral curses brother stanley prayed to jesus because jesus speaks to him and uh, jesus told him stanley tell these people for seven days seven times they have to say the chaplets of divine mercy and they will be set free from the ancestral curses my brothers and sisters after seven days were over these children of the witches and warlocks who inherited these curses because of this uh, uh, worship of demons now were set free they were so joyful they came and thanked stanley for his uh, you know advice on that seven days each day seven chapters of divine mercy for seven days my brothers and sisters they were delivered from the ancestral curses think about it what curses his ancestor must have inherited by worshiping the demonic spirits and they were set free my brothers and sisters so we have a powerful weapon here called divine mercy chaplet so i'm going to preach on that i'm going to give you why this divine mercy chaplet is so powerful the history behind it when it was given all these things i am going to explain to you then you will know about it my brothers and sisters you see it started from poland in 1932 till 1932 there was no permission in poland for abortions abortions were illegal but what happened in 1932 the rules were liberalized for abortions in poland in the case of someone rape somebody and uh, the child the fetus is very sick and um, you know in a state it cannot be in a fully formed or the woman's health is in danger or baby health is in danger such cases the abortion was allowed but many people started taking advantage of this situation and this liberal laws and between the two world war the first and the second you know out of three pregnancies only one survived and two were literally 
you know, my brothers and sisters, out of three, one was aborted and only two survived. You see, my brothers and sisters, the abortion became so rampant. And what happened? The anger of God was blazing upon Poland. And he revealed it to Sister Faustina during this period. And you know, Sister Faustina was alive between 1905 and 1938. So Jesus appeared to her and several times spoke about it. And one day she saw the anger of Jesus. What happened? She saw an angel of God in a vision. He was carrying one kind of a punishment from God, you know, to destroy a particular city. Most probably it must be Warsaw. Because Warsaw was the highest abortions were taking place. You know, my brother says, so what happened? Now she can see through her vision, there were thunder, lightnings were blazing from that particular angel. He was shining, radiating from his hands. There were fires were going literally and she could see and she was very fearful. She shuddered. She started praying and nothing was working. And his uh, angel was coming forward, coming forward and moving. And she knew that particular city will be destroyed. She was worried. My brother, suddenly she was lifted up in front of the blessed Holy Trinity. And here, suddenly from interiorly, one prayer started coming to her. You know what is the prayer? Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole. Have mercy on us up to that. My brothers and sisters, every time interiorly the prayer started coming to her. You see? And as she was saying, and suddenly she heard the angel telling God the Father, I cannot move forward. I cannot move forward. He stopped. My brother and sister, the punishment was cancelled. Next day Jesus appeared to her and spoke to her and told her, my daughter, you know you have to say this chaplet whenever you have a problem. You know he detected the entire chaplet just now I told you, but added one more word and also say, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us, the first time shared, and on the whole world. You have to pray for the whole world, he said. Hallelujah. My brother and sister, from then onwards, this chaplet of divine mercy, you know, came into prominence through Sister Faustina. But remember why this is so powerful. I want to tell you, the number one, you know, we are not praying this chaplet, invoking Jesus, but invoking Heavenly Father, Abba Father, you see, and we are telling through the passion of his son, Jesus Christ, and who is offering his body and blood for the sake of the sins of the world, for our sins and the sins of the world, he is offering atonement for, it, for the entire world, my brothers and sisters, his own body, his own blood, he is offering. You know, when you are offering that passion, when the heavenly father, when you make him remember the passion of his son, which he went through, his heart melts. That's why this prayer is so powerful. And secondly, you remember, it is a divine prayer given by Jesus himself to appease the anger of his father. So that's why whenever you invoke this prayer, this prayer of chaplet of divine mercy, the miracles happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, now listen to some of the things, my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you. You know, let's connect you to the Old Testament, some of the places, you know. Why? In the Old Testament, we all know. How are the expiation of the sins? What was offered? My brothers and sisters, they wish to slaughter the lambs or the animals without blemish. And is to offer the cut and offer that, the blood of that, you know, as an atonement of the sins of the people. But look into this. Now we will see Leviticus chapter 4, 1 to 4. Let's get into that. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, When anyone sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, if the anointed priest sins, bringing guilt on the people, he must bring to the Lord a young bull without defect as a sin offering for the sin he has committed. He is to present the bull at the entrance to the tent of the meeting before the Lord, he is to lay his hand on its head and slaughter it there before the Lord. My brothers and sisters, you know, see here, 
you have to do the atonement in the old testament by you know slaughtering a lamb you know and offering uh, for the sins of the people or of the priests or whoever it is my brothers and sisters again i will tell you in the book of hebrews chapter 10 4 to 7 look into this and 12 to 14 it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins therefore when christ came into the world he said sacrifice and offering you did not desire but a body you prepared for me with burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased then i said here i am it is written about me in the scroll i have come to do your will my god but when this priest had offered all for all time one sacrifice for sins he sat down at the right hand of god and since that time he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool for by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy hallelujah in the old testament again and again you have to give the sacrifice for your expiation of your sins atonement of your sins but in the new testament jesus willingly gave his body and blood as a sacrifice one time sacrifice my brothers and sisters you know by that he became a lamb you know for the expiation of the sins of the people so that's why this sacrifice is very powerful that's why eternal father i offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son our lord jesus christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world hallelujah what a powerful prayer my brother and sister you are offering eternal father i offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son we are offering to the heavenly father the body and blood of his son you know that's why it becomes so powerful prayer you know his heavenly father heart melts you know this is the most beautiful prayer my brothers and sisters hallelujah hallelujah my brothers and sisters that's why you know now let's sing i'll tell you a few of the beautiful testimonies and you will know that I am going to give you the promises of the divine mercy, chocolates, and with scriptures, and what is the mercy of God. All this and some videos and some testimonies will be very beautiful, my brother and sister. There was a farmer in Philippines. This brother Stanley said in his testimony, You know, this farmer was poor. He had a few acres of land in Philippines, but he did not have manure, you know, to put for his fields. You know, what was he was very poor. You know, all the farmers used to put a very high quality manure and so that the crop grows up. You know, but he did not have money. You know, he just put the seed. What he did? Early morning, he will run around his field, continuously recite the chaplet of divine mercy. Afternoon again, he will run around his field, continuously recite the chaplet of divine mercy. My brothers and sisters, he went on doing it day after day till the harvest came. And when the harvest, you see, all the other farmers said they put the manure, you know, but more than their harvest. This particular farmer recited the chapters of Divine Mercy, had a bigger growth and a more harvest. And it was a typical, you can make out the power of the Divine Mercy chaplet. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, no farmer in that area had so much, you know, harvest, my brothers and sisters. You know that that's why it's only the chaplet's power you know this and secondly some promises of the divine mercy chaplet i am going to go on the screen now let's watch this the first promise of divine mercy chaplets my brothers and sisters you know promise of divine mercy chaplet the first promise souls means soul means not dead people my brothers and sisters souls jesus always calls their souls for the people souls who spread the honor of my mercy i shield through their entire lives as a tender mother her infant and at the hour of death i will not be a judge for them but the merciful savior hallelujah if you are spreading the divine mercy mission there is a promise for you my brothers and sisters god will not stand as a judge for you you know how beautifully he says i will not be judge for you but i will be a merciful savior for you hallelujah i have prayed the divine mercy chaplet at the deathbed of several people my brothers and sisters and i have experienced so much goodness of the lord from that 
upon the people who are dying. And I believe they are saved. Hallelujah. You know, and I remember, you know, one of my aunties, my wife's auntie. We had gone to a Manipal hospital. She was on the last stage. So myself and my wife went over there. And her daughter was over there in that hospital, in that room. She did not know anything about Divine Mercy Chapter. We explained to her how to go about it. We also held the hands of that auntie and said the chapter of Divine Mercy. After three or four days, that auntie died. And we met her daughter, you know, during the funeral in the, near the grave. She came and hugged my wife and she said, I am so grateful and thankful to you for teaching me this chapter of Divine Mercy. I want went on, you know, and reciting this chapter of Divine Mercy at the last moment of my death of my mother. A glow came upon her. You know, a glow came. And I do believe my mother is saved. You know, I am so happy and grateful to you for teaching me that chapter. Hallelujah. My brother and sister, see, a glow came from heaven upon the face of her mother. You know, that shows she was saved. Hallelujah. That's the promise of divine mercy. My brother, when you say this chapter in the presence of the dying, you know, my brothers and sisters, there's a mercy of God come. See, it says very clearly in this second, let's watch into the second one of the promises. The daughter write that the greater the misery of a soul, the greater its right to my mercy. Hallelujah. My brother and sister, and I urge all souls to trust in my unfathomable abyss of my mercy because I want to save them all. You know, Jesus wants everyone to be saved. You know, you need to trust in the mercy of God. You know, one of the promises is even if a person, you know, whole his life may be committing sins, you know, and maybe, you know, maybe a killer or something like that, like Ted Bundy, I told you about last week, you know, he was a serial killer, you know, he called a priest, I met a priest at the last moment, even such people can be saved. And Jesus said in that book of divine mercy, in my soul diary, it is written, Jesus said, even if a worse sinner recite the chaplet of divine mercy, even once in his lifetime, still I will pour my graces upon that soul. Hallelujah. So my brothers and sisters, and the next promise, you know, all say unceasingly this chaplet that I have taught you. Whoever will recite it will receive great mercy at the hour of death. See, this is the promise, my brothers and sisters. And next one. So I desire that the whole world know my infinite mercy. I desire to grant unimaginable graces to those who trust in my mercy. Not ordinary graces. Even you cannot imagine such graces will come to you through the chaplets when you recite the chaplet of divine mercy. And the next promise and write that. When they say this chaplet in the presence of the dying, I will stand between my father and the dying person, not as a just judge, but as a merciful savior. Hallelujah. What a powerful promise, my brothers and sisters. You know, there's a, so these are the, and secondly, next promise, through the chaplet, you will obtain everything if what you ask for is compatible with my will. Hallelujah. You see, through this chaplet of divine mercy, you obtain everything if what you ask for is compatible with my will. I will give you one beautiful testimony on this. One day, Sister Faustina, <coughs> there was a lot of Tom in that particular place in Poland. You know, because now she knew, you know, this chaplet's power. She wanted this particular, you know, these storms to stop. And she started praying the chaplets of divine mercy. Suddenly, the storm stopped. You see the power of the chaplet of divine mercy. And one day, you know, what happened several days, as a, one month or two months, something long time, there was no rain in Poland, this particular area. All were dying, you know, all the so many things and the vegetation, all this dying. There was a famine. And this sister Faustina decided to pray the chaplet. Continuously, three hours she prayed the chaplet, she says. And the rain started pouring. You see, my brother and sister, here the storms can stop. Here rain is coming. You see the power of the chaplets of divine mercy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My brother and sister, that's why we need to know the power of the chaplet, my brother and sister. If it is compatible with Jesus' will, whatever you ask, you will get it through the chaplet of divine mercy. Hallelujah. Because why? Because the more you trust, because you are showing the trust in Jesus, when you trust him, you know, God, he will be so pleased to grant your wish. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters. So let us look into 
some of this my brothers and sisters hebrews 4 16 the scripture you know the word of god here the mercy of jesus i want to tell you hebrews 4 16 let us then approach god's throne of grace you know with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our times of need hallelujah my brother and sister whenever you are in trouble my brother and sister you know you need to approach god's throne of grace you know with confidence so that you will receive mercy you know that's what is very important you know this divine mercy chaplet is approaching the god's throne of mercy hallelujah i want to give a beautiful testimony which happened to a lady of a prayer gathering called christina just uh, three four days back she called me i got a call late in the night about maybe 10 10 30 11 o'clock you know and asking me for prayer she was crying on the phone she told me brother i have had a severe pain you know radiating from my kidneys and when i was urinating you know the blood was flowing from my urine my brothers and sisters, you know, I, am, I was really, you know, feeling sad now. You know, but I know the power of my Jesus. You know, and I told Christina, do not worry. I am going to pray for you on the phone. And she also started, she had prayed the chaplets of divine mercy. And uh, I started praying and asking God's mercy upon Christina, quoting the promises of mercy of God. My brothers and sisters, after that, I told her, do not worry, Christina. God will be merciful. He will take care of you. In the meantime, she has also, some of our ministry members she had approached, they also started praying. My wife also started praying. My brothers and sisters, you know, but after I prayed for her, I really felt sad because Christina, as she's alone here. She's the only lone uh, working member of the family because her husband has got certain diseases. He's not able to work at all. He's without job in Mumbai. And she has got a daughter and all the expenses of that, Christina's small salary, she has to look after the whole family. So she's in deep difficulty. If she's also falling sick and she's in trouble, she, she loses her job, what a tension this family. So I started feeling for her, I started pleading with God for the mercy. God, let there not be anything serious with her, protect her kidneys. All this started praying and others, our team members also started praying the chapters of divine mercy. My brothers and sisters, and I got a news from her. Again, brother, the, after you prayed, the blood flow from the urine stopped completely. The normal flow started. And my brother said, but it gave us a lot of encouragement. And she went to the hospital. Her friends took her because they cannot take a risk with her. And she took her at midnight at 12 o'clock. And the doctor said, uh, we have to go, uh, run some ultrasound and all these uh, test scannings. And uh, you have to come tomorrow morning. She gave some medication and sent her in the morning. She went during the, before she went to the hospital. Again, she called me, brother. Pray that nothing will be serious for me and so that I will be protected. And I asked, pleaded the mercy of God. Again, I prayed for her online and I said, Goats, Christina, do not worry. God will be merciful to you. You know, my brother and sister, our God is a merciful God. And when she did the ultrasound, the doctors found a stone. You know, that stone was, and also I prayed, let there not be any surgery because so many times she would undergo surgeries and all. She's not in a position to go undergo all that, all difficulties now. And the doctor said, the stone is very small and it will pass off. It passed off without any problem, my brother and sister, only with some medication and water drinking. And now she's completely free and she's thanking God for the mercy he has showed. She said, I'm continuously, I was praying the divine mercy chaplets. Not only that, Christina is really loves divine mercy. Whenever she goes home to India, she comes to me, takes so many pictures of divine mercy she distributes all over the world last uh, all over the places in the last time her hus husband was in the hospital wherever she went she went on distributing the divine mercy chapters my brothers and sisters and uh, this uh, pictures of divine mercy images and the god was so merciful he brought a powerful healing upon her husband hallelujah all glory shall we give a big hand to the lord for christina's healing hallelujah praise the lord my brothers and sisters here the next scripture, I want to tell about the mercy of God, Matthew 9, 13. But go and learn what is this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, you know, Pharisees, you know, they did not have mercy. You know, they're always following all these rules and traditions and this and that. My brothers and sisters. That was not acceptable. But Jesus, he said, told them, 
go and learn what is this means i desire mercy not your sacrifices for i have not come to call the righteous people but i have come to call the sinners hallelujah jesus always came to call the sinners my brothers and sisters to save them you know so ephesians chapter 2 4 to 5 but because of his great love for us god who is rich in mercy made us alive with christ even when we were dead in transgressions it is by grace we have been saved hallelujah you know see again let's see that scripture again my brothers and sisters because of his great love for us god rich in mercy <coughs> made us alive with christ even when we were dead in our sins you know he made us alive you know by jesus christ hallelujah and by his grace we are saved today hallelujah you know number 3 micah 7:18 who is a god like you who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance you do not stay angry forever but delight to show mercy hallelujah see how beautiful scripture my brothers and sisters from the micah uh, chapter 7 verses 18 who is god like you who pardons sin and forgives the sins of the remnant of his inheritance you do not stay angry forever but delight to show mercy see god is not angry forever we may think some people after committing sin they think oh my god our god will not pardon me the satan will make you feel very guilty and he will tell he will never forgive you my brother said that's a lie you know what jesus said one of the questions was put to jesus you know what is the sin which jesus will not god will not forgive what jesus said to sister faustina my daughter you know i forgive every single sin you know but one sin will not be pardoned is that lack of trust that i have forgiven that soul see this is the sin is not pardonable because a person is not trusting that jesus has forgiven you see that is not acceptable to jesus so you have to understand one thing every single sin when you go back to jesus and ask for mercy or you go for confession you know your sins are forgiven you have to trust that hallelujah praise the lord again my brother says isaiah you know uh, chapter 30 verse 18 my brother sisters you know yet the lord longs to be gracious to you therefore he will rise up to show you compassion for the god is a god of justice blessed are all who wait for him hallelujah yet the lord longs to be gracious to you hallelujah he is waiting to be gracious to you merciful to you therefore he will rise up to show you compassion a king of kings and the lord of lords is waiting for us to show compassion and mercy upon us hallelujah shall we give a big hand to that wonderful god who wants to bless us you know he is waiting to be gracious to us hallelujah again my brothers and sisters 2 chronicles chapter 30 verse 9 for the lord your god is gracious and compassionate he will not turn his face from you if you return to him hallelujah you see for the lord your god is gracious and compassionate he will not turn his face from you if you return to him only he wants you to return to him he will never turn his face from you hallelujah you have to believe that my brothers and sisters how wonderful our god is hallelujah now let's go into the image of divine mercy see that image here hallelujah jesus is here standing you know this beautiful image of divine mercy the blood and water is flowing from the heart you see remember this two rays you know my brother what happened jesus said this two rays that is the last moment of his on the cross he was there you know that moment one uh, soldier wanted to see whether jesus is alive he brought one big lance and poked his heart you remember little blood little water flowed out from the heart of jesus that moment Jesus said to sister Faustina that moment my highest mercy open to the whole world hallelujah my brothers just imagine on the cross the fountain of my mercy was opened wide by the lands for the all the souls no one i have excluded hallelujah what a beautiful word jesus gave my brothers and sisters no one was excluded such a mercy opened up for the whole world hallelujah again my brothers and sisters that is what we have to understand today 
the God's mercy. Let's see the image of divine mercy. Again, promises of the divine mercy image, my brothers and sisters. You know, let's watch into this. Paint, paint an image according to the pattern you see. With the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. Hallelujah. You need to. She told her to paint an image. Initially, she did not know. You are thinking, it's in my heart, I have to paint an image. She did not understand. One day, Jesus appeared very angry. And he told her, my daughter, if you don't paint an image of mine, I will hold you responsible for millions of souls that will be lost because you did not paint an image of me. She was so scared. So after she did not know what to do, she caught hold of some painters and finally one Hila or someone is painted this beautiful picture to Ivan. Even though she was hap not happy because Jesus was so beautiful, but she accepted it because Jesus said, it's okay da daughter, you cannot really paint me, you know, doesn't matter. You know, so finally, this particular picture was accepted, my brothers and sisters, you know. So, now we can see, but he told her very clearly, Jesus, I trust in you, put my signature. You know, my brothers and sisters, that's why whenever you say that prayer, Jesus, I trust in you, you're showing the trust in the mighty Savior. Hallelujah. And he's very pleased with you. Hallelujah. Let's see the more promises. You know, I promise that the soul that will venerate this image, that this beautiful image of divine mercy, when you when it, when you give honor, you know, this house will not perish. I also promise victory over its enemies already here on earth, especially at the hour of death. I myself will defend it as my own glory. Hallelujah. One particular lady in America, my brothers and sisters, you know what she did? You know, on the, uh, there was a big, uh, during the second world war it was. You know, and uh, this particular lady put the uh, beautiful picture of divine mercy on her door and she went away because there was a too much attack of the Nazis over there and a lot of things were happening at this particular. But imagine all the houses around that area when she came back late after the war was over, everything was destroyed and one house remained. And that was the lady who put the image of divine mercy on her doorpost. Hallelujah. That's why my brother says, how powerful is the promise? Again, what happened in Vilno and Krakow? These are the two cities in Poland. Allowed the veneration of divine mercy in the city squares. All other cities said no. All the cities bombs dropped and destroyed. And uh, so many destruction took place, so much. But these two cities, Vilno and Krakow, not a single bomb detonated. Hundreds and hundreds of bombs were dropped by the Nazis. Not a single bomb detonated. God was holding it according to his promise. You know, that place will not perish. Hallelujah. So, my brothers and sisters, I request every one of you to put the image of divine mercy in your houses and on your doorposts. Do you know? It will become like, you know, how during the Passover time, the blood of the lamb was put on the Israelites' houses and the spirit of death passed over. You know, he hit every Egyptian's house uh, and killed the first, firstborn. But not a single Israelite's house or destroyed, neither any of them died because the spirit of death passed over everyone. You know, my brother, wherever the blood of the lamb was seen, my brother and sister, we can say during the doing that this period, now the pandemic period is going on. You put the blood of the lamb that is made Jesus image on your doorpost. I believe that God will protect us and all those who are dwelling in our homes. Hallelujah, my brother and sister. That's why. It's very important, my brothers and sisters, these chapters of divine mercy are very powerful. One young man was driving the car in America. He met with a serious accident. Serious means his car was small and the vehicle what he hit was huge, some kind of a tanker or something like that. And the car was in such a terrible state. And the police who witnessed it and ran over there into checking What's happened? This he said he thought that person who was driving the car hundred percent would be dead because he has seen so many accidents like that, and nobody has come out safe, and everyone literally are dead. And he thought this nobody can survive in this kind of accident because the car was smashed, literally. And my brother, when he went, he found one young man, not even a scratch on his body. You know, when they found out, his father has placed the picture of divine mercy in his car. That's why. That boy was saved. Hallelujah. You know, they found the picture of divine mercy on the next seat. That father had put the picture of divine mercy because his father was a firm believer in divine mercy. Hallelujah. So, my brothers and sisters, how powerful is the divine mercy image? You know, believe it, my brothers and sisters. 
you know that's why <clears throat> let let me tell you my brothers you remember this chaplet of divine mercy you can and i am offering people a vessel with which they are to keep coming for graces to the fount of my mercy jesus said that vessel is this image with the signature jesus i trust in you so you go back to the jesus you know when you go back and believe and uh, when read him god will definitely will save you my brother and sister i desire that this image be venerated first in your chapel and then throughout the world hallelujah you know my brother we are doing that we are doing that divine mercy group my brother and sister the first mission god gave me to spread the divine mercy all through the places initially i started in a small way only distributing 10 chaplets of divine mercy to my families i sent it you know i saw the promises i was so impressed slowly i got in touch with one one filipino brother he came in contact with me for the divine mercy when both got together we started spreading the divine mercy we started in a small way my brother and sister but each time i spoke on the divine mercy god started doing miracles i witnessed miracles in my life you know i knew god wanted me to spread the divine mercy then we started in our initially in this country you know in our church and they went on spreading then slowly we gathered to india you know from india we got so many then slowly slowly each year we went on increasing and then we went to other countries from african countries and all the other countries now my brothers and sisters i do not know how many countries we have reached now but i know at least 3 to 4 million pictures of divine mercy we have distributed all over the world it's only not because of our strength our you know power or anything it is only his mercy he wanted to spread using us weak instruments and we have to give glory to our jesus and hallelujah shall we give a big hand to the lord hallelujah just imagine how many people must have been saved through this mission and thank you and all my ministries are helping me our divan masjid prayer group members are helping me so that i am able to do this big work you know for the glory of the hundreds and hundreds of uh, churches we have reached out my brother and sister free distribution of the divine mercy images you know and the prayers and today every house one day father worgis our spiritual director was telling me i go to any house i see the divine mercy pictures <laughs> Hallelujah some lovely lady was coming and tell me brother in my village in India I went every single house I saw the divine mercy which had come from you hallelujah it has come from here because we ours is a different way of the divine mercy the picture it you can immediately make out hallelujah so my brother and sister now we are recently I sent a, a one consignment to Africa Nairobi let's watch the pictures of divine mercy it's how beautiful it was spread in the church you see the pictures of divine mercy my brother and sister how beautiful you can see the photographs of this all the pictures people are holding the divine mercy images you know so let's go to more photographs please yeah yeah go further yeah so my brothers and sisters see the pictures of divine mercy was spread you know all over the places you know in our now i have sent another 10000 pictures of divine mercy to africa it's on the way my brothers and sisters very soon it will within another 30 days a uh, uh, possibly 35 days it will reach to nairobi uh, kenya one priest is taking lot of initiative to spread it to so many churches in africa so requested me and now we have sent the consignment uh, through the ship and i believe very soon it will reach and so many thousands of people will be saved for the kingdom of god shall we give a big hand to the lord hallelujah so my brothers and sisters we want to spread the mission not only me you all have to spread the mission i want you to take the initiative take these pictures of divine mercy take to your, your parishes and speak to the divine mercy about the people save them because jesus highest greatest mission of jesus is the conversion of sinners he told sister faustina my daughter you know the greatest thing i want is for the conversion of the sinners and your prayer that prayer is always heard and answered that's the divine mercy chaplet prayer you see that's why jesus is very pleased can you do this divine mercy work my brothers and sisters and do this wherever so many people came to me our prayer group members and some people they said brother we are spreading this divine mercy and we want it and i gave it to them and uh, they went and spread and they are distributed thousands and thousands of pictures to their parishes friends relatives and they were so happy and they witnessed miracles in their life hallelujah i remember one beautiful miracle which happened one lady took from me and distributed in kerala you know and she gave it to, in a particular place you know my brother and sister during the flood you know that entire area you know that it was flooded in kerala but this particular place is where this particular family had distributed a divine mercy picture which i taken from here not even one how the water did not come up at all 
and they said these non-christian people in that area everyone witnessed a miracle because all over the area that's wherever divine mercy was not it was flooded but this particular place was saved hallelujah all the houses who venerated were saved by god hallelujah so my brothers and sisters so let us believe in the mighty power of god you know that then let's go into the third this thing the divine must see the small pocket cards my brothers and sisters which are always distributed for the people to keep in their pockets you know this is a small divine mercy three o'clock hour of mercy prayer this is a very powerful prayer jesus said there's a promise like let's look into the promise my brothers and sisters promise of three o'clock prayer at this at three o'clock in the afternoon this is implore my mercy that's the time jesus died especially for the sinners and if only for a brief moment immerse yourself in my passion particularly in my uh, abandonment at the moment of agony this is the hour of great mercy for the whole world i will allow you to enter into my mortal sorrow in this hour i will refuse nothing to the soul that makes a request of me in virtue of my passion you see jesus said in this hour i will not refuse anything for those people if you ask anything in virtue of his passion because why it is so powerful is because you are participating in the passion of Jesus Christ at the hour of mercy at three o'clock. You are remembering and participating. That's why this prayer is very powerful. My brother and sister, three o'clock hour of mercy. Don't just say three o'clock. If you are able to say a chaplet, say the chaplet. You know, my brother and sister, I always advocate nine chaplets of divine mercy. You know, if you are in a, your families are in trouble, you know, pain and misery. You know, the full chaplet you have to say, the ninth chaplet I told you. Jesus called the Divine Mercy Rosary, called Divine Mercy Chaplet. Jesus said this word, chaplet. So that's why on the rosary, you are saying the chaplet of Divine Mercy. You all know that. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. If your family member is sick, you can say, for example, you know, if my son is sick, okay, I can say, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on Calvin and on the whole world. You know, like that, have every time the entire prayer will go for Calvin's healing. You see, my brothers and sisters, the mercy of God will come upon him. So, if you are in trouble, I can suggest you, you know, every single day, this chaplet, you can say every hour, if possible, for nine hours, for nine days. It's a very powerful prayer, my brothers and sisters, for nine days, nine chaplets. That means for nine days, it will be 81 chaplets. One chaplet of divine mercy will take you maximum six to, six to seven minutes or maybe five minutes or six minutes or something. You know, so you can say nine chaplets in a day. You see, but God will bring a mighty healing and blessing, whatever problem you may have. You know, my brother and sister, that's why. Now let's watch Brenda's testimony, her trust in the divine mercy, what happened. Let's watch into this. Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. My name is Brenda D'Souza and I am from Sharjah, UAE. I'm here to testify about my daughter Cadence. But before I begin, I would like to quote a very beautiful verse from the Bible. Luke 1 37, nothing is impossible for the Lord. In the year 2004, our daughter Cadence was born. And like every parent, we all were very happy that now our little love boat is complete. Me, my daughter Cadence and my husband. After a few months, my husband said, Brenda, I think Cadence is having a hearing problem. I said, no, I don't think she has a hearing problem. He said, why don't we go and do a test? We went to the doctor, we did a test and it was confirmed to us that Cadence has a sensorineural bilateral hearing loss. That is as good as no hearing at all. I remember I cried so much on that day. I did not know how to pray. Somebody told me, Brenda, why don't you go for the Divine Mercy Prayer Gathering and you will definitely see a miracle over there. I went to the Divine Mercy Prayer Gathering and that's when I got introduced to Brother Alfred. I remember I stopped him that day from going for the prayers and I told him, Brother, why don't you come home and pray over my daughter today and definitely there will be a healing. She will, she will be healed of her hearing loss. So he told me, Brenda, if you have come here with faith, why don't you continue staying for the prayer and definitely we will see a healing in your daughter. So I remember I continued staying in prayers that day uh, in the church, but my concentration was not on my prayers. My concentration was back home on my daughter, hoping that she would be healed. After the prayer meeting, I immediately ran home and I looked at my daughter and I was looking for a healing in her. But unfortunately, there was no healing and that broke my heart even more. So I remember I called our brother Alfred and I told him, brother, there is no healing in my daughter. So he said, Brenda, start coming for prayers every Friday and you will see a progressive healing. He convinced me. I went for the prayer gathering Friday after Friday from 2005 onwards. Friday after Friday, we started going for the prayer meeting. That's when I learned 
the Divine Mercy Chaplet, a very miraculous chaplet. I learned the Divine Mercy Chaplet and I also learned the power of praise and worship. So brother always said before any prayers, do the praise and worship in any circumstances, lift up your hands and praise and glorify the Lord. It was difficult initially, but that's how I learned the power of praise and worship. After a few months, my husband and me decided that we need to do a cochlear implant for our child. That is a, a device which will help her to amplify her hearing. It was not a very easy decision, but we prayed about it a lot along with the Divine Mercy team, the intercessory team. They all prayed along with us and we got a very wonderful doctor back in India. And with a lot of prayers, Cadence's surgery was successful. So Cadence is now a cochlear implant child. We brought her back to the UAE and now is the time that we had to put her to school. It was a challenge to put her into a mainstream school, but we've got a school for her. And I remember this incident in grade four that one of the teacher told us that we are very sorry, but we cannot keep Cadence in school anymore because she is not like the mainstream children and she needs a little bit of more prompting, which takes away a lot of our time. We need to concentrate on her. I said, but even though, uh, even though, but she's performing very well in school. I told the teacher, she said, no, that's not the case, but then we cannot keep her in school. Uh, I convinced the teacher, the teacher said, okay, fine. Let us, the principal told us, let us give her one test and see how she performs in school. I remember they gave her a geometry test, which was not very easy for her. It gave, we gave her a, they gave her a geometry test and they said, we will put her with all the other children and we will see how she performs. I lifted my hands. I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, this is the time for you to show victory. This is the time for you to show the school a miracle that Cadence can perform well. Me and my daughter and my family, we prayed. And I remember among 25 students, Cadence stood the top in the class. All glory to God. And I quote Luke 137 once again, nothing is impossible for the Lord. Gradually, we changed Cadence's school. And again, she had to give an entrance exam to go into a school, uh, maths, English and science. So I looked at my husband, I said, now what? I hope she clears this test. He said, power of praise and worship and the Divine Mercy Chaplet. We, we recited the Divine Mercy Chaplet nonstop. We, we did the praise and worship and Cadence performed wonderfully well in her entrance exam. And she was now into a proper mainstream school. From grade four to grade 10, Cadence has performed wonderfully well in school. All glory and thanks and praise to God. Our Lord Jesus was always with us. Whenever we recited the Divine Mercy Chaplet, whenever we did the praise and worship, we could see miracles and blessings flowing into our lives. Cadence has completed her grade 10 this year successfully and she has done very well in her exams. All thanks and praise to God. Cadence means rhythm and rhythm means music. So me and my husband decided why not we put Cadence for a music class. And today Cadence also plays the keyboard very well. She plays for the Lord very well. And in back in 2005, when we did her test, I was wondering what would happen to my daughter. Would she be able to continue her education? Would she be able to hear? How would she be among the mainstream children? And look what the Lord has done. Amazing, amazing miracle. And today Cadence has successfully completed her grade 10. And I know that the Lord is going to be with her throughout her life. I always feared, you know, my, my little boat rocked. There was a storm. But little did I realize that there was a strong rock standing in my boat. That was Lord Jesus telling us, I am with you, calming every storm in your life. So thank you, Jesus, and praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Divine Mercy. This is the three o'clock prayer. Our blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us. I trust in you. My brothers and sisters, this is the three o'clock prayer, hour of mercy. You know, so this is the prayer you have to say because three to four o'clock is the hour of mercy, my brothers and sisters. So you can say this prayer, but it is very beautiful if you say at the hour of mercy exactly at three o'clock, if possible. Hallelujah. But still one hour of is there for you. Hallelujah. So let us remember that. So my brothers and sisters and God had done wonderful things. You know, this divine mercy is the weapon God has given to all of us for the last time, my brothers and sisters, for these times. So let us continue to recite the chaplet of divine mercy and uh, when read the image, Age of divine mercy and also say the three o'clock prayers and also spread this mission all over the places wherever we can you know and make the people know because there are powerful promises my brothers and sisters you know because those who spread the honor of my mercy jesus said 
I will not be a judge for them, but will be a merciful savior for them. So let us use this weapon God, God has given to us, save others and save ourselves. I'm sure the divine mercy Lord will bless you and your families in a mighty way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.